Okay, in these next two videos then we're going to look at diffraction. So in this first video I'm going to talk about some of the basic ideas of diffraction and what diffraction is um, and then also look at something called single slit diffraction which you need to be aware of. Then in the next video we'll move on to diffraction gratings which is probably the most important application um, in, in your A-level course. It is important though that we understand the basics and what diffraction is. So essentially, if we were going to write a definition for diffraction, it would be this. So it's the spreading out of waves after passing through a gap. Now that's a very general definition. Um, and essentially, the narrower the gap, the more diffraction. The narrower gap leads to more diffraction. Now you've probably seen this effect before. Um, if you imagine like a harbour with a gap in the, in the harbour wall, think of the waterways going through that gap, you know that they will spread out. Um, here are a couple of pictures. There you can see um, at the top there, the idea of the waves coming through the gap, imagine they were water waves, and you can see that on the smaller gap, there's more diffraction, there's more spreading out of those waves. Similarly, the bottom picture shows that diffraction also happens um, just while waves go round an obstacle. This is essentially the reason why we can hear round corners but can't see round corners. Um, the wavelength of uh, light is so, so tiny compared to the gap of, say, a door, that the diffraction that happens is so insignificant that there's no way you can see round a corner. Whereas for sound, actually, the wavelength of a sound wave is much more comparable to the size of a door, a doorway. So the sound waves can diffract through the door, hence you can hear round corners. Okay, let's look then at single slit diffraction. So we talked in the last video about double slits and Young's double slit experiment and we talked about how the light from the two, uh, two slits interferes, hence we get the fringe pattern. But if you shine light just through a single slit, you don't just see a single blob of light on your screen, you will in fact also see a kind of fringe pattern. And the reason for that is diffraction. As light travels through the slit, so if we imagine here's the slit, over here's the screen, and the light is traveling through like this. Well, actually, light from different parts of the slit will interfere with light from other parts. So light coming through the top interferes with light coming through the bottom, almost as if they were double slits. And if you combine the overall effect together, what you do get is a kind of diffraction pattern. And in fact, it's not the same as for double slits, it's not equally bright, equally spaced fringes. What we get is the following. So if we were to draw a graph of intensity against the position. So we're imagining that this here, this zero, this is right in the centre. And we're looking at how the intensity of the light on the screen changes as you go further from the centre. What you'd find is that you get a very wide, bright central maximum. And then after that, you get much smaller intensity, narrower maxima as we go further out. So that's not particularly drawn because it is meant to be symmetrical. Um, but what we get is this wide, bright central fringe or central maximum. Wide, bright central maximum and then out here the intensity of the maxima decreases as you get further from the centre. Okay and I should also note that you can see you've got this wide um, fringe in the centre. These then, once you get down to here, 
they are then all the same width. Okay, now, as I said, the reason that is occurring is because light from different parts of the slit interferes with all the light coming from the other parts of the slit. And so we get this effect. Now, just to show you a slightly better version that I haven't drawn, um, and also slightly more to scale, um, you can see there are three different sort of representations of it. So on the left, you can see a sort of, imagine you were looking from above at some waves going through a single slit, the sort of pattern you would see. And then the graph at the top there is an equivalent graph uh, to what I've drawn. You can see that wide, bright, central maximum, and then the much lower intensity maxima as you go further out. And underneath that is a picture of what that would actually look like in reality. Just to prove it to you, let's have a look using a laser, using a single slit, let's see what we get. Right, let's test the theory then for our single slit. Let's see if we do actually see the pattern like I just drew. So I've put a single slit into the holder. Let me turn the laser on. Okay, and there you can see the pattern. Now again, I appreciate it's not very clear on the camera. It is much more clear in reality. But here, there is our bright, wide, central fringe. And then you can see these dimmer, narrower outer fringes. So there's one, there's the next one. And actually after that, they just are not visible. Okay, so we do see there the pattern that we expected and that we predicted. Okay, now for your course, you need to have an, an understanding of, of this shape. You don't need to know where it's come from in one sense, but you need to know this shape and know what it looks like. And you need to know how changing some of the features of our light or of our slit will affect this central maximum. Now, there is a formula for the width of this central maximum, this central fringe, which is not on the syllabus. However, I feel if, if you know this formula or you sort of remember it, then you'll be able to remember um, what effect changing the wavelength and so on will have. So this is the formula. Now, like I said, this is not on the syllabus. So W, that's the width of the central fringe, is lambda over A times 2D. Okay, now A, that is the, uh, the slit width. That's how wide my single slit is. So A is the slit width. And like before, D, that's the distance from the slit to the screen. Lambda is obviously the wavelength, and W is the width of this central maximum. Oops. So what that shows us then, okay, uh, from our formula, is that if we increase the wavelength, we will see a larger central maximum. Similarly, if we increase the slit width, we will see a smaller central maximum. And that agrees with what we said right back at the start. Narrower gap, so in this case, narrower slit width, more diffraction, so a much wider central maximum. So you need to just know what effect changing the wavelength has and what effect changing the slit width has. You know, I'll just write a summary down here, just so that um, so that you've got it. Okay, there we go. So greater wavelength, bigger W, and narrower slit, bigger W. Now, a little bit like when we talked about double slit, we can also think about well, what about if this was not just a single wavelength? What about if we did this with white light? And like we might, might expect, what we'll end up seeing, like you can see on the screen, so the top one is just for a single wavelength, the bottom one is if we had white light, different wavelengths going to diffract by different amounts, therefore you will see blurred fringes and you will start to see the spectrum there. Okay, you'll see that spectrum uh, like, like we did really with the, with the double slit. 
All right then, so by way of a little summary, if we imagine just um, looking at the intensity against position graphs for the double slit and the single slit, I, I appreciate they're not drawn particularly well, but you can see there for the double slit, we get these equally spaced fringes, and if you're ever asked to draw it, that's exactly what you would draw, equally spaced fringes, all the same brightness. And then here for the single slit, you've got your bright, wide, central maximum, and then the much lower intensity, narrower, um, secondary maxima, and so on. Now, that's what you need to know for your A-level course. I just want to very, very quickly do a bit of an extension um, to help explain something, just, just in case you're interested. Don't feel that you need to watch this, but if you're interested, carry on watching. When we looked at the double slit pattern on the actual, on the screen, on the wall, um, you may remember that we noticed that they were not all the same brightness. These maxima here were not all the same brightness. And actually, there, there were a few in the middle were quite bright. Then they gradually got dimmer. And then actually, they then got a little bit brighter again. Now, there is a reason for that. Um, for reasons which you certainly do not need for A-level, when you actually shine light through a double slit, because the double slits themselves have got a finite width, they're not infinitesimally small, they've got a width, what you end up with is this double slit pattern, but it sort of occurs within the envelope of the single slit pattern. Okay, let me show you what I mean. So if I just redraw my single slit pattern here, I'll try and do it roughly the same as I did above. I'm sorry, that's not amazing. But there is my single slit pattern again. Now if I imagine drawing the double slit pattern, but at all times I have to remain inside the envelope of this. So I've got, here we go, equally spaced fringes. But now I get some that I can't really draw. Okay, and then the same on this side, I'll just do that quickly. Something like that. And so the blue line is what you'd actually see. So here are those central few maxima, which we did see clearly. Then there's the bit where the intensity drops off. Let me show you a slightly better diagram than, than mine. So you can see there, you've got the overall pattern from the single slit, and then inside the, the much higher frequency, I guess, um, pattern, that is the double slit. And so that's actually what you'd see. And if we want to see, um, in terms of actual light, what that would look like, there's the pattern just like we saw. So like I said, you don't need to know that. You don't need to um, know all the details of that. But just to explain to you that strange effect that we saw, okay, uh, that is why it was. Okay, so um, that's it for this video. We're going to carry on with diffraction in the next video and look at something called a diffraction grating. So I will talk to you on our next video.